Hi, my name is David Summerfleck, and I'm a digital marketing specialist online at dms.blue. In this video, I wanted to take a few minutes to really discuss working conditions and working with clients to all my freelance uh, and web developer and programmer and graphic artist uh, friends out there um, in web land and out on the internet. Um, you know, to say that I, I feel for you guys and what you're, what you're doing, what you're trying to do, um, you know, is an understatement. I've been there. I'm still there. Um, and the lessons that I've learned, I've learned from really, really, uh, you know, decades of experience. Uh, so I want to take a few minutes to try to go over some, some little tips that I learned. Um, you know, on forums, on uh, question and answer sites such as Quora and LinkedIn and, and obviously Facebook and Twitter, you see a lot of questions that are asked over and over again, um, very, very commonly in a daily basis. One of them is the client is taking over and telling me what to do and how to do it. This is done traditionally out of fear. The client doesn't know where they stand. They're not sure what you expect or what you know or don't know or where things are headed. So they feel like, well, I'm going to take charge because I need to. I don't know what's going on. That's not where you want to be. So from the beginning, it's really incumbent upon you to ease that transition from point A to point B. You want to assure the client that you know what you're doing, you know how to do this, and that you have a process in place for enrolling them into your business. So the way I do it is I really require uh, that we have at least two or three brief conversations first. It's usually the first conversation is to see, are we a good fit for each other? You know, does the client really even have a business? Because in a lot of cases, you will see clients who say that they're business owners, but they really just have an idea for a business and they're just pricing around and how cheap can I get this if I want to pursue this business one day? They may have a good heart, but that's not somebody you really want to spend time talking to because they're not at that point yet where they're going to be a client. They just want to investigate. So you can tell them, well, most projects typically range from, you know, this amount to this amount. And the price is really going to depend on the breadth and complexity of the project, how many customers you want and expect and need, and how you want to grow that business. So you want to keep it at that point, wish them well, and let them know how to keep in, in contact with you. You know, you want to ask them questions first to see if they're a good fit for you before you even think about working with them. How long have they been in business? How many employees do they have? If they don't have any at all, they're probably not going to be a good fit for you. Have they worked with a business or marketing person before? Have they ever invested for advertising before in a newspaper or online before? If not, there's going to be a lot of pushback on whatever it is that you want to do because they don't know. They're not experienced. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means you have to educate them. And that may or may not be someplace you want to be. Secondly, most importantly, talk about achieving specific goals. They've got to have a business. They've got to have business objectives that they need to reach. So for a clinic, that could be that they want to um, have more beds in the clinic occupied. It may be a health spa or a gym that they need to increase the number of memberships within 30, 60, 90 days. It could be a lawyer who needs to get more clients uh, coming in on a consistent basis. Whatever that objective is, figure out what the KPIs, key performance indicators or metrics will be for that. How will you measure success? What does the client expect success to be? Because if there's no destination in mind and you don't know where you're going, then you're just going to be wandering around like the walking dead, just trying to figure out where you're going to go and what you're going to do. 
that's not where you want to be. And that's where the clients step in and say, look, I better take charge because they don't know what they're doing. You don't want to be in that position. So require at least two or three conversations to find out who's involved, how long have they been in business, what's their annual revenue, how many employees do they have. If they don't have at least a handful of employees, their budget for investing in marketing may be too small. It's got to be at least 1500 or whatever just for you to even start a project to put all that work and effort into it and make some profits back. So you got to have these criteria in place. Um, you know, focus in on achieving specific business objectives, use KPIs, compare what they have already to larger, more profitable competitors. So if it's a client and they have a free DIY site from Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or whatever, compare that to more profitable uh, competitors in that same industry. So you have a metric, you have a, something to show them. Hey, look, I know you love your site, you made it yourself or your son did it and, and everything, but are you getting the, the phone calls from it that you'd hoped for? Oh, wow, what a shame. I wonder how much that's costing you per day in, in lost wages. I wonder what we could do about that. What do you think, client? And hey, let's look at what your larger, more profitable competitors are doing, what they have, so we can put it in context. It might work, okay? Uh, and you also want to, when clients talk about design and tools and everything, you want to, again, switch that focus to achieving business objectives, reaching outcomes. It doesn't matter what tools you use. They don't know because that's not their area of expertise. They're a restaurant owner, a lawyer, a doctor, a clinic owner, a college founder, a startup founder, whatever. So your job is to be the expert and have your set of tools that works for you to achieve those objectives. You're the one making their site rank high in local Google search results. You're the one making their site work on mobile devices and process payments and consolidate overhead. That's your job. And if you don't know how to do that, then you should take a step back, go to Udemy, udemy.com, sign up for as many free courses as you can. Some aren't going to be what you'd hope for. Some will be really good. So sign up for these free courses and learn what you must learn to work on a higher level so you can talk to clients about really value. That way you can charge more and you can justify it because then you can say, look, all the neighborhood hobbyists, all the people on Craigslist and Fiverr, and that's great. They're going to give you an empty template. I can guarantee you results if I work with you. If you meet X, Y, and Z criteria, then I know I can knock it out of the park for you. I can guarantee results. And that's something nobody else can do in your area. So elevate your game. Hold the clients accountable for wanting to achieve specific results and outcomes. And let them hold you accountable too once you know you can do it. So that's my input on this. To ask me questions, you can find me online at Facebook and Twitter and Quora and, and at DMS.blue. And ask me whatever you'd like. And uh, thank you for watching and have a great day and good luck.